I was born in New York, lived in New York many years. Raquel and I met in New York. We met through mutual friends. We love to hike. We love to go outdoors. Uh, I love to fish. We both enjoy playing golf together. My first uh, 14, 15 years of my life, I was in uh, California, then came back to the East Coast and grew up in a little town. And then uh, Ross and I met and we've been up and down the East Coast and then we got the pleasure of moving to here to Washington, which is absolutely stunning. And just the hiking, the sightseeing has been amazing and we just love it. We started out going to breakfast and um, I kept choking as I was drinking my juice. And I'm like, I knew the concept of how to swallow, but it just wasn't clicking. I just noticed she was acting a little differently. And then like she said, she started choking and she couldn't articulate. And then seeing some of her mannerisms changing and then I actually saw her face droop a little bit. And I'm like, oh no, this is a, this is a stroke. When someone develops a neurological symptom that may be indicative of a stroke, it's important that we have rooms and time and people available to address that immediately. For Raquel, for instance, she was able to get here quick enough that we were able to provide the kind of care that gives her her quality of life back. We have to be ready and prepared for everything that comes in our way. So we have to be experts in a lot of different fields of nursing and a lot of different fields of healthcare to make sure that we can help people with their needs. They're well-trained people, they're talented people, they're passionate people, and they're not just doing a job, they're doing their calling in life. And I could see that level of care to her and it just, just blew me away. Sometimes just that extra hand on the shoulder saying, I'm sorry that you're going through this, and being their support person when they're here. Our staff do an incredible job at that. You'll usually encounter one person, two people, that kind of like, just like wow you, but we were just wowed continually with everybody that came in touch with her. From the, the cafeteria people to the cleaning, the nursing staff, they gave me such hope and guidance. It was amazing. flexibility, resiliency of this emergency room team has been just inspiring as we move through a transition in nursing that is nothing I've ever seen in 23 years. It's changed every single month for the last couple of years and they just are rolling with it and adapting to every single change that we throw at them. We're being challenged in a lot of new ways that we, our emergency room was not designed to handle specifically with size, specifically with not just emergency throughput, but hospital throughput. When we have the benefit of asking a donor and, you know, kind of sharing some of our ideas and, you know, you see the light bulbs go off about, that is a tremendous idea. Why didn't we do that before? And you're like, okay, yes, like now we're going to make a difference. We're going to actually get back to our community something that they need. Great organization. I, I'm getting a little overwhelmed with emotion just talking about it because it means so much to me. I just, you know, I love her with all my heart and I wanted to make sure she was okay and I knew this was not something I could take care of myself and fix. So I wanted to get her as quickly as I could and safely as I could to the emergency care because she's just, she's my life, she's my everything. It's just amazing that we have this kind of level of care in this community and she may not be here at all if it had not been for this hospital and, and the critical care and the fast action here. So we're very lucky with to have this Good Samaritan Hospital in our community. Love you. Love you too.